much time can you have if you have uh, just a few more? So, what this uh, adaptive learning system and the EMS now, they provide the, the, the so-called the customized instruction to help our learners have a more step-by-step -step way to so-called level up their knowledge. Then, the teacher's role. If the teacher can be free, I would say completely free, there will be some uh, learners where the AI system can help. And these are the ones the teachers can do a lot. Using the data they can see from the system to say, actually, the system is not helping this small amount of students. Then they will put it out for, for more individualized coaching. How is that? Let's say you have 10 uh, low, low progress and the system helps you. Uh, then it saves a lot of your time, really. Uh, all you need is to pull up the trick to, to give them the individualized coaching. So this time, the so-called free invite by the commerce can be used on uh, lesson preparation for higher order thinking, uh, which by the current of AI might have a challenge in achieving it. So how can teachers so-called uh, leverage on this system? Rather than to think about how teacher can leverage on AI, the, the question is how teacher work with technology at that, which is actually the whole theory behind e technology. So whatever you learn in e technology, you will find that what's the fondness of technology, put it uh, together, then decide yourself how you make the system. But if you want a more, more direct answer, just to give some anecdotal advice. Uh, in, in a class where where you have a, a varied groups of learners. Now, uh, this group of learners who have problems catching up with some procedural knowledge. That's where uh, they, they can actually work. Uh, the AI adaptive learning system can help them. Then those who need the highest level learn, uh, the instruction can be differentiated for them to uh, take on higher challenge tasks. So when we say AI, it's not like uh, the, the teacher just let the, the student use the AI and execute the thing. Actually, it's not exactly that clear. Uh, because from many researchers, you'll find that there are a lot of time needed uh, for a lot of things. So how do we free up those tasks that can be automated so that we can divert this amount of time for, for even higher value and the stuff that we can have for students? So that is a broad answer to a broad question. Thanks, Dr. Kwan. Maybe just to add on that, I think some of the questions are actually directed to health, yeah, directed to automatic systems. Uh, it's, it's important, important that, like, in the national, it's important to take note that the English language, for example, example where the English language is pretty much concerned, the teacher will remain central in guiding and developing the student's language proficiency. So, so therefore, the EMS will augment the teacher's professional practices, as I mentioned about the pedagogy, by providing the basic language error detection and correction for student writing. It will not be able to give feedback on creating use of language, or the more complex writing aspects, which is where the teacher comes in with the more dominant uh, proficiency of the area. Over time, uh, we know that the AI is expected to perform more routine, time consuming tasks, which normally is taken over by teachers. But the teachers will still remain crucial in the complex, creative, motivational, and facilitative roles needed in the engagement of students and to take classroom instruction to the higher level. So, so therefore, the, all these AI systems system will not reduce any interaction between students and teachers, but rather bring about a more complex uh, degree of conversation to take place that will allow for frequent cycles of iteration, drafting, and consultation between the student and the teacher, therefore improving the writing process. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 I want to say that, that uh, quite often there are two key things. Like, right? Right. First, first of all, if you're incorporating AI into your curriculum, you got to first understand the limitations uh, and the affordances of, of, of AI. So for example, if you know what um, an automarking system is capable of identifying and not capable of identifying uh, or not so good at identifying, then you kind of already have a a sense in your mind of what to rely uh, on the system for. So, for example, um, an, an AI system is great at identifying errors at the level of a sentence. The, the system becomes less reliable when you're looking at things that cut across a text. So, for example, is a student using the right hand? 
uh, this, this is going to be difficult for a system to uh, to, to, to give you good feedback if you're using a very complex, complex series of, of cancers, right? So, right? so you're going from present to past, present to past. Can a computer be as good as a human being at assessing whether your cancer is correct? No. So, so something like this is going to be useful for a teacher to bear in mind as you think about what to use the system for. On the other hand, there are also things that are already existing in your current repertoire that you should think about adjusting on and adapting to to AI tools. So for example, uh, in the secondary curriculum and I think in the primary curriculum too, uh, I've already mentioned GRR. Uh, and, and things like think aloud, things like explicit instruction. Um, remember that the use of a, uh, an AI tool is a learner strategy, right? A person is using this or a learning strategy. A student is using this to learn more about language. And the strategy is acquired through a uh, demonstration from a teacher. So what, what I mentioned just now is exactly what's already in the curriculum. So there's no need to apply a fresh set of pedagogical approaches. You think about the one you already have and use that for your AI tool. Another thing to bear in mind, for example, is the use of exploratory talk. And you want kids to be talking to each other in an open, authentic fashion, not in a stilted way. Um, how do you facilitate that kind of conversation between people as they discuss the feedback from a system? I think that is something we can think about. So, so exploratory count are also we have already in the curriculum and you can use that, you can adapt that to your system. Um, final thing to, to say is that you still bear in mind the pedagogical uh, framework you have for your units of work, for example. How do you, how do you start a unit, how do you uh, integrate all your different language skills from speaking, listening, reading, writing, grammar, vocabulary. So if you already have that framework, you're going to ask yourself, how does this AI fit within that framework? So, for, so for example, example, if a, if a unit brings, brings you from reading to writing, writing and then at, 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 at the writing stage, stage there's a part where, where you want students to do proofreading, reading, to do editing, that's where the AI can, can come in very useful. useful. So, so think, think about the whole sequence, the instructional sequence for your students, the existing one, and ask yourself, how can this tool mend the process that is already in your repertoire? So thank you. Mm. So, so I guess the brief response to this question is that the teacher's role is still always kind of central in the enactment of learning experiences. So the very cool analogy I have for this right, is that if you think about uh, play chess, you know that now uh, AI can play chess, right? Probably better than any human. Does that mean that there are no humans to play chess? No, because what we found is that the next level of uh, chess competition, in a sense, is for the AI to work with the human chess expert. They each bring different things to the table. The AI brings the brute force of computation and logic. The human brings the creative side. So I guess one of the key questions that we should reflect as educators ask ourselves. As teachers, am I a creative worker or am I just uh, an actor? Of processes, processes and procedures. So, therein so will probably lie uh, the centrality of the teacher's role. Uh, I'd just like to respond to a few other questions. Um, there's a question by Chuck Queen that I think many people are asking about, which is uh, what's the difference between the, 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 the custom uh, AI tool and then what is available off the shelf? Right? So, uh, so uh, this uh, alludes to what, what I mentioned earlier. earlier. Off, off the shelf systems, all AI systems are predicated on certain models that are built. Right, depending, depending on the data that is collected. Customizing this model and the data will enable it to more accurately respond to our context. So that's why we are pursuing this second track of work for the automated marketing system, which is going to take some sort of R&D to customize um, the, 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 the technologies as well as the databases that are used. So, um, that, that there is like the interface one, one when, when you roll out the off the shelf system in Q4. Uh, you are all very right to say that it will probably, will probably not be the user experience, experience will not be too different, different from what you are familiar with if you have been using Grammarly, uh, Google Word, Word uh, Skyhawker, you know, some of these things that are readily available already. It will be very, very similar in the first place. But in the second place, the accuracy, the tools that we will be able to build in into the system will be more bespoke and tailored to Singaporean teachers' PNL needs. The other question was from Lee, who mentioned that learners found the AMS more useful than teacher markers. Uh, this, this is not accurate. accurate. Uh, students did not express a preference for the system over the teacher. In fact, uh, I think the, with the, the rollout of the, 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 
the yeah, language hacker, hacker also or someone is out of it to prove that we have used the right uh, pilot tools. The students have actually found that uh, the, they now understand, understand uh, why it's so difficult for teachers to mark one. Okay, because, because they, they, they now know that actually there's a lot of complexity behind just simple things like picking out errors. That's one thing. So it's not accurate to say that they prefer the automated marking system over the teacher. What the students express as a benefit is that the automated marking system is immediate, it can be faster than the teacher. And I think we have to concede that. Right? Um, um, as the students write the essay, they get some response about hey, you need to correct this grammar, so on and so forth. So, so there lies, lies the power of the complementarity of two approaches. The system can act quickly on very basic, basic kind of uh, feedback that, that, that many of our learners need, like many of our uh, participants are able to write lower progress learners, kind of will be really assured that they get more consistent feedback. There's a part. But, but the teachers, teachers also have a very powerful and central role to play, which is to provide students with that more targeted, more specific feedback. Because only the teacher can discern what is the learner's needs, right? right? What are actually the underlying language issues that you're struggling with. So, um, uh, these are some of the questions. There are some questions in the, in the chat, but I think we are almost out of time. We have about a minute left. So, uh, maybe uh, I should know, maybe I'll do it. Can we still join? 